Yo, yo, what's happening, everybody? This video, we're gonna get super nerdy converting between binary, hexadecimal, octal, and decimal. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you don't understand these number systems, it's not a huge deal. You can still follow the video and just kind of put it in the back of your mind if you ever need it. We're not gonna go deep into how all these number systems work. I have videos on that if you really care. The main thing here is just to see some of the versatility with the parse int method as well as the two string method. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Please be sure to stick through and subscribe if you enjoy the content. But more importantly than watching this video, I care that you find a good job in the industry. And one of the best ways to do this is go through a boot camp for web development in JavaScript, React, Node.js, Git and GitHub, source control, user experience, testing. Uh, I can't think of anything else, but I'm sure there's more covered in the Dev Mountain boot camp. Dev Mountain is a really, really successful boot camp where a lot of people get lots of success going through this boot camp and learning more in 13 weeks than they've learned in two years. They are generous enough to sponsor this series, so please, if you enjoy the content, check out the link in the description. Go there, go to their boot camp, and they'll give you 250 bucks off if you mention that I sent them your way. So thank you guys for that. Now let's dive into using parseInt for some base conversions. So the first thing is, let's just get a prompt from a user. And what we're going to start with them typing in a number and we're going to interpret that number in four different ways. So basically the way number systems work is that you can have a number such as 1, 1 and in decimal that means 11, but in binary that means 3. So basically when we use numbers like this, these can be interpreted different ways depending on what base we're thinking in. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask a user for a number and we're going to present that in four different ways, interpreting it as first decimal, then binary, then octal, then hexadecimal. All right, so let's just ask them to put in a number. So the very first thing is we're just going to spit it back out as decimal. So we're going to say decimal and I'm going to put a colon here and then we just print out input. So this will just copy exactly what they put in. So you put in 11, it prints 11. When we go to binary, this is when it gets a little bit more fun. So now rather than just putting input in here straight like this, we can use the parse int method on the number object. So number dot parse int. First argument is going to be the input, the string we want to convert to an integer. The next argument is going to be the radix or the base. So we could put the value two. So now when we do a refresh and we put the value in one one, we get 11 and then Three. So depending on if you interpret 1-1 one, one as decimal or binary, the decimal result is different. So I should probably clarify the results over here are in decimal. So the value 1-1 one, one in binary is three in decimal. We can do a very similar thing with octal and hexadecimal. Now let's do a refresh, put in the same number 1-1. One, one. Well, 1-1 one, one in decimal is 11, 1-1 one, one in binary is three, 1-1 one, one in octal is 9, and 1-1 one, one in hex is 17. Okay, so that is how we convert from different bases to decimal. Also, I put a bunch of these spaces here to make it pretty, which I obviously failed. So this is how to convert from these different bases to a decimal value. But if you wanted to switch it around and convert to these different bases from a decimal number, that works a little bit differently. So let's get rid of this. And what we're gonna do is now, we are going to get a decimal number. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna output that in decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal. First thing first, I'm gonna put the decimal value and then just put a little string. So we're converting from decimal to decimal. It's not gonna do anything. And then all we have to do is just put the input value here. So right now, put in a decimal value, let's put in 11, and we get 11. Shocker, right? Now let's do binary. By the way, the, whether or not to use pluses or commas is totally up to you. You could also use commas here. So now we're converting from decimal to binary. And the way we're gonna do this is we're going to take input dot two string. So right now you can pass in the radix here. So we could say radix two. So we want it to go in binary, but you can see when we actually print it, it doesn't work. It's printing the same exact thing. And the reason is because we can't put a base when we're using two string on a string. And you can see input is actually a string. The reason it's a string is because prompt returns a string. So what we actually wanna do is convert this to a number. 
Now when we refresh and try this, we put in a value 11, we get 1011, which is how you represent 11 in binary. You can do a very similar thing with octal and hex. So now let's do a refresh, put in the value 11, and if you don't like the way these look, you can replace the commas with pluses. Now throw in the value 11. You can see 11 in decimal is 11, 11 in binary is 1011, and 11 in hexadecimal is B. So there you go guys, I know that was a little bit of a drawn out example, but basically, you might need to use this for school or for just some fun. Hopefully it was useful for you guys. If you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. And you know what, you need to check out the next video. Why, you might be wondering? Because we're gonna be talking about number instance methods. So these are gonna help us out a lot through our programs and you don't wanna be a butt and miss them. So check it out, I'll see you in the next one.